thank you for tuning in to another episode of Disability is Not an Inability with your host, Ivy. And this evening, we have an amazing guest who I thought would be such a wealth of information to you wonderful people about Bitcoins and about investments. And I wanted to make sure that you got information that you could find helpful and useful. And I thought of no other person that could do it justice better than Big Mo Crypto. Without further ado, Hello, Big Mo. Hello, Sai Speaks. How are you doing this evening? I'm Thank well. you for having me on your show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on here. I know that you're busy and I value your time. So thank you so much. So we're going to get right to it. Before we jump into Bitcoins, please give my viewers a little bit of information about yourself and how you got into Bitcoin, please. Okay. Well, I'm, in a, I'm an IT professional. I'm an IT manager and I've been in this profession for 20 years. And um, it seemed that a lot of people who are into Bitcoin are, are IT people, gamers, and you know some people like that tend to you know you know geeks, us computer <laughs> geeks. So I wish I had followed it uh, some years ago when it was like five dollars and a dollar and stuff like that, because right now one Bitcoin, if I go to CoinMarketCap.com, one Bitcoin is nine thousand seven hundred thirteen dollars. And that's US dollars. All right. So that's one of the things that people ask is, is Bitcoin real money? Well, what is Bitcoin? Let me give you the, the Google definition. It says uh, each Bitcoin is basically a computer file, which is stored in a digital wallet app on a smartphone or computer. People can send Bitcoins or part of one to your digital wallet. and You can send Bitcoins to other people. Every single transaction is recorded in a public list called a blockchain. All right, so that's the dictionary definition. What is it really? What does that mean to you without it being in geek speak? It's internet money. It's digital money, okay? It's money that doesn't require any third party to verify it. Um, as you know, you and I were meant talking earlier and I was telling, giving you an example of um, buying a car, all right? And if, if I wanna buy a car from you, typically it's $2,000. I hand you the $2,000 cash, transaction's over, only you and I know about this transaction. If I send it to you with like Zelle or, um, or uh, PayPal or Cash App or anything like that, it appears that it's just going from me to you, but it's not. There's a third party in between that's verifying the transaction and making sure the money goes out of my account into your account. And I'm not sure if it, it goes through their servers. Well, I know it goes through their servers. I don't know if it goes into a separate account or how exactly they do it, but it is, it is verified by a third party before it goes any further. So you do need someone else. In those cases, you do need someone else. With cryptocurrency, with Bitcoin in particular, which is the largest cryptocurrency, um, I can send that $2,000 directly to you. I can hold up my phone, you can hold up your phone, and I can send that to you. I can even send you a file, um, and I can email you a file that has the $2,000 in Bitcoin on it. No kidding. I can email it to you. You can download it onto your computer and you can scan it with your phone or uh, enter the digits with your, um, your Bitcoin wallet and you would have the $2,000. All right. And no one knows about the transaction except you and I. So I have two questions that comes out of that. Yes. Um, how do you purchase Bitcoin and what is a Bitcoin wallet? Okay, a Bitcoin wallet, um, just like you have a wallet, a physical wallet to hold your, your dollars or a purse. Um, I don't want to be sexist, but you know, maybe your wallet or your purse. Maybe I have a purse. I don't know. But that would be a, um, this would be your means to store it. So there are hardware wallets, like a physical device. It looks like a, it looks like a USB stick. This is, um, this is a Bitcoin wallet. This is one of them. This is a physical hardware wallet that would actually go inside of your, um, inside of your, your computer and you can store it uh, on here. You transfer them off of your software wallet, which is a, the wallet that's actually on your computer. And you can actually put it on here, take it out, put it in your safe, put it in your safe deposit box. So I could have a million dollars in Bitcoin on here. On something that looks like a USB. On something that looks like a USB stick, exactly. Exactly. But it's money. But it's money. And it's, you know, people ask, is it spendable? Um, absolutely, it's spendable. So again, without making it too geeky, um, it's, it's, it has a value. 
It has uh, an exchange. Um, you can look always look on cryptocurrency, uh, not cryptocurrency, excuse me, coinmarketcap.com. They have an app. Um, oops, sorry. They have an app, and you can um, actually see how much it's worth on any given day. Um, there are a lot of places that accept it. Uh, Microsoft.com. Um, do you use Overstock? Do you ever shop yes, on Overstock? Okay. Overstock is also one of my favorites. And the CEO of Overstock, the previous CEO, was a huge Bitcoin advocate. And he, um, he allowed you to purchase anything, furniture, you know, dresses, shoes, sneakers, anything on Overstock.com using whatever the current value of Bitcoin is in whatever money you're using, if it's USD, whatever. So can I just go to my traditional bank or credit union to purchase Bitcoin? No, that's what you can't do. You have to go to an exchange. Let me mention a couple of the exchanges. Um, Coinbase is the biggest one. Coinbase. And this is online, right? This is online. Coinbase.com. They're based out of uh, New York, I believe. Kraken, uh, Bitrex, and Gemini and Robinhood are two of the newest. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about purchasing stock with uh, with Robinhood. Um, Robinhood.com, and you can you know there's an app on your phone as well, and um, you can also use Cash App to do it. So Cash App can you you know you can transfer money with it. Cash App you can uh, buy Bitcoin. You don't have to buy, and that's another thing. You don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy fractions of the Bitcoin. So you can buy like twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin or fifty dollars worth of Bitcoin. Right? All right, and um, they'll store it for you, or you can transfer it onto your computer or onto your, your hardware wallet. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, Travelocity also accepts it. Travelocity, You can Pornhub, travel on Bitcoin? <laughs> you can travel on Bitcoin. Did I mention Pornhub? I've heard, I've heard that they accept the it. The porn site accepts Bitcoin. I, I heard. So you've heard. Okay. That's why you have personal knowledge of such things. I heard. Thank you. You're welcome. That sounds great, right? Like Overstock did it for me. Like that's one of the stores that I do frequent online. So that would be interesting to go to make a purchase and when I'm checking out to pay, I see Bitcoin. I get it. But is it really profitable? Like you hear it. I can only speak for myself when I heard about it and I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a fad. This is some type of scam, Bitcoin, you know, cyber currency. I'm not buying right. it. It just doesn't seem legitimate. But is it right. profitable? Have you seen have you feel that, do you feel that it's worth the investment that you put into it? Okay. There are a number of ways to make money with Bitcoin. There are what they call ICO projects, uh, initial coin offerings, um, where they'll come up with a new cryptocurrency, a new project. So again, Bitcoin is the biggest, that's the largest one, but there are others and there are always new ones coming on board. All right. So, one way to make money, I'm gonna give you three ways. I think it's three ways. Um, one way is to invest in a startup. It's basically a startup. It's like a cryptocurrency startup. And so you put a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, whatever their minimum is, and you buy uh, not shares, but you buy you buy coins, right? You buy portions of you buy. You could call it shares, for lack of a better term, of a particular cryptocurrency. So Credence was one that I that I purchased. All right. Um, the risk is it could go out of business because it's not a proven cryptocurrency. Credence did. Um, I died with 1,800 Credence coins. I don't remember what I paid for them. It might have been $200 or something. I don't know. But there are other projects like Ethereum, uh, which is the second biggest, um, Ripple, which you hear about all the time. And um, you can invest in these, and as they appreciate in value. So let me give you a for example. Um, when I first got into it, like I said, about four years ago, Bitcoin was worth $1,200. Okay. That was one so Bitcoin. when Bitcoin was $1,200, I didn't know how to buy it. I thought it was foolishness. I still, even though I'd heard about it and I'd heard about it some years earlier, but I didn't know enough how to, you know, and it was harder to get a hold of. Coinbase didn't exist. You had to know somebody or you had to go to like an, um, almost like a Craigslist. Right, where you actually, I'm, I'm, I promise you, where you actually go to someone, meet someone, and they hand, you know, you, they don't hand you Bitcoin, they exchange you the Bitcoin on your, on your wallet. So it's worth $1,200.
So if you if I purchased that asset, if I bought one at twelve hundred dollars today, it'd be worth just under ten thousand dollars. Yes. Wow. Okay, I'm, I'm speechless. And then previous to that, it was much cheaper. It was two hundred dollars. It's five hundred dollars. It's fifty cents. You know, there are people now who purchased Bitcoin for fifty cents who bought like fifty Bitcoin. You know, a hundred Bitcoin. You know, a hundred Bitcoin was a hundred times ninety-seven hundred. Was that nine hundred thousand dollars? Something like that. And so can they cash that out? Absolutely. And you can you can take it directly into your bank account. So an exchange like um, I mentioned some of the exchanges. So like, okay, I have a Coinbase account. All right. Um, so I can purchase Bitcoin. I can receive Bitcoin. Let's say you want to send me, Size Speaks wants to send me one Bitcoin. All right. You're feeling particularly generous and you want to send me one Bitcoin. All right. You can send that to my wallet or you can send it to my, uh, yeah, let's say you send it to my Bitcoin wallet. I give you my address. You send it to me. I now have one Bitcoin with $9,700. I can go into Coinbase. I can uh, take it out and have it transferred to another account, like my Bank of America account or something like that. Or I can have it transferred to like, a, let me show you this. I have a debit card similar to a rush card. All right, similar to a rush card. Can you see that? All right, like that's a debit card. It looks like a traditional debit card. And it actually has the Visa logo on there, okay? So using that, I'm, I can take that, that same uh, one Bitcoin that you sent me, I can transfer it to this debit card, and I can use this debit card anywhere. All right, just like a regular rush card, like you load money on it, I would load my Bitcoin directly on this. I could then take it and I can go buy my latte, I could go buy windshield wipers. I can go to Walmart. I can go buy groceries. So that's how you take Bitcoin and you make it use completely usable anywhere. So say I'm out and about, right? Like we talked about online, but say I'm out and about. Right. Are there any stores that you know of that um, accept Bitcoin as payment? And how will I know that Bitcoins are accepted at that establishment? That's not online. Okay, fair, fair assessment. So like I said, the BitPay card would be the easiest or some type of loadable Bitcoin received debit card would be the easiest way to use it anywhere, okay? Um, but if you were curious about who, off, who accepted it, it would typically be just like you see a Visa logo, you know, credit cards accepted here, Visa accepted here. It'll say Bitcoin accepted here. Well, so like the first time, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so the first time um, when it was, it was driving me nuts and I was trying to figure out how to buy a Bitcoin, right? right? So they have Bitcoin ATMs, first of all. Have you ever seen a Bitcoin ATM? No, I know. But yes. does it look like a traditional? It can. Wait a minute. What does a Bitcoin it, ATM look like? It's, it's similar in size. Um, they have them. Um, I'm not sure where you are, but I'm in Atlanta and they're all over. You know, they're, I've, they have um, a Bitcoin finder on online and you know they have them in gas stations they have them in yeah they're all kind of random places and you put in your 20 bucks you see you know you scans your id you put in your money say 20 bucks with the bitcoin you hold up your bitcoin wallet on your phone um let me see if i can pull up one of my wallets while we're while we're talking and it might not be on this phone um and you can then it'll transfer the the the, prop, the amount of Bitcoin you hold up your wallet. It's a scannable, like a UPC symbol, and it'll you scan it and it'll put it directly on the wallet on your phone. That so that's one way. Unbelievable. Um, another way, the way that I bought my first Bitcoin, um, first fraction of Bitcoin, I went into a, um, I looked online and one of the places that sold it was a computer store, computer repair store, and they sold computers and they. Um, they sold Bitcoin. You just go in there, you, you tell them how much you want, and they would just go in the bank. There's some kind of transaction fee, and they'd come back out, and you hold up your wallet, and they would transfer directly to your wallet. Okay. You have completely blown my mind because, you know, I'm used to, you know, debit card, physical money, a check, 
maybe. Um, you keep mentioning the, the debit card. Do I automatically get a debit card once I purchase Bitcoin or do I have to request one? You have to request one. Okay. Yeah, but it's, there's no, I don't think there's any charge for this one. I mean, if it is, it's fractional. Yeah, I'm trying to find, um, yeah, so like um, this is Airbits. And uh, let's see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Let me pull that a little closer to the camera. Okay, uh, what, is, what is Airbits? Okay, so Airbits is a directory and it's a way, to, it's a directory of uh, places that accept Bitcoin and places where you can have the Bitcoin ATMs. So it has categories and it shows restaurants that specifically accept it. Um, as you mentioned earlier, because it just, it just slipped my mind about this. Uh, places where you can, electronics, gift cards, places where you can shop and you do a search just like you might go to Google and say um, Chinese food near me. I don't know. Do you eat Chinese food, Sly Speaks? Not, really. Not so much. Yeah. You don't seem like a Chinese food person. <laughs> Are you are you a little bougie, size speaks? I am, Maybe. and it's okay. okay. I'm, a, I'm, well, I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I I know I recognize that with your illness, it's it's considered an illness. Um. Yes, chronic kidney disease is is an illness. And okay. I'm very and I know that. That's what I was going to say. I know that. But I'm, um, you know, I'm not in New York anymore. But I am a New Yorker, and I like to believe that New York has the best Chinese food in the world. And where I currently live, it's an insult to my taste buds to try to eat Chinese. <laughs> so I'm a little food snob. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> okay. All righty. So, um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, what I wanted to mention to your viewers um, before we get too far off track, I mean, I know this can get a little geeky, and I'm a little bit geeky about it. Um, so, let me show you. This is my current Bitcoin address. This is a Bitcoin wallet. Okay, now, so if, if your mind was blown before, oh, can you see it? I'm sorry. I can it. see it. It's, it's like the little cube and the scan. The right. Well, the QR reader. Exactly. Right. So, um, so you would hold your phone up and if you had your wallet, right, you had a Bitcoin wallet, I can actually scan this, you could, you know, either way, you could scan mine or I could scan yours. I could send to you or you could ask to receive Bitcoin. Okay. Have you ever sent someone like a cash app request or a Zelle request? Yes. It's exactly the same thing. But it's Bitcoin. But it's Bitcoin. And we would just hold it up. I would, you know, be able to scan it. I would send it to you and it'll be done. Okay. So let me get to the heart of the question, right? I am, like I mentioned, and most of my viewers are, battling some type of chronic illness and they're on a fixed income and right. how does Bitcoin work for us? How can we get a piece of the pie? With okay. With limited income? Okay, good. Those are, those are good points. Okay. So I said, I was going to tell you three things. So one is you can buy it and let it appreciate. So um, like I said, it was worth $1,200 about four years ago, three years ago, and now it's worth just under $10,000. Last year, it went up to $17,000, no, $18,000, I believe. So somewhere around $20,000. And that's the most it's been, and it's, it's gone down since. But that's another way. You can purchase it, hold it, and let it appreciate. So that's one way. Another way is what they call Bitcoin mining. Okay? That's how Bitcoins are created. Bitcoins use a special type of computer. Um, doesn't have a screen or anything. And it's what's called a miner. And it, gener it solves some kind of computer problems, some very difficult com computations. And once it's, it completes the solving it, it creates a fraction of a Bitcoin or a whole Bitcoin. Now, there's, you know, that's a whole nother area, um, but it is an area. You can, you can get started for a few hundred dollars. It, when Bitcoin was very, you know, as it hit, approached 17,000, 18,000, um, what they call a mining rig was about $2,000, $3,000. But because the interest has waned, you can get one for about $400 now, brand new. And you can get, even get one as cheap as about 40, 50 bucks. It won't generate, it won't make you a lot of money, but it'll get you, you know, to learn the process. So mining Bitcoin, you know, is another way to do that. And um, I'll be glad to share some resources with you guys about how to get started with that. Okay. I, I think um, that would be great because um, like I said, 
the people that normally tune in. I mean, we have some other people, but most of my audience battling some type of chronic illness and a couple of hundred dollars could mean life or death for them. Like, do I get some Bitcoins or do I pay for the medication? But I want to... I wanted to bring you on because I believe that you possess the ability to take your, your, you know, your knowledge and kind of trim it down for people who may not be able to drop a couple hundred dollars, but they could still feel like they're investing and in, see even just a little return. You know, I don't want them to miss the train and feel like they're not able to contribute to something because they're on a fixed income. Understood. So they have fifty dollars. If you can buy fifty dollars worth of Bitcoin, you open up a Coinbase account. There's no there's no charge, um, or you go into your Cash App and you give them fifty dollars and you get fifty dollars worth. So those are the first two ways: um, purchase some, however much you you plan to spend, and allow it to increase in value. Just like buying a stock, consider it like you're buying Ford stock, which is actually a good buy right now. It's about five bucks a share, and you can do that in Cash App or Robinhood. Um, so that's another one. All right, you can do learn invest in, in mining and you can generate your own bitcoins. All right, another way is to invest in startup projects like um, uh, Ethereum is like the number two bitcoin or, or Ripple XRP um, is another one. I think it's going for like 30 cents. Um, right now, XRP is 20 cents. XRP was as high as three dollars last year or two years ago, year and a half ago. So your your fifty dollar investment would have been worth several hundred dollars. All right. I know people who bought Litecoin. Litecoin is number seven. It's gone from forty three dollars a share. I believe it went up to like five hundred dollars a share, something like that. So that's another way. Um, another opportunity is to get a channel like mine. So um, as you mentioned, my channel is Big Mo Crypto. You can look it up online and uh, please on follow, YouTube. He's not going to say but I will. Please follow Big Mo Crypto. That's B-I-G-M-O-C-R-Y-P-T-O. C-Y-R. <laughs> and give it to me again. That's it. C-R-Y. Yep. <laughs> yep. Big Mo Crypto. Please follow him. has a lot of information on his YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you, Sasha Speaks. I appreciate that. Um, and some more information. I have a bunch of information on there about different projects, different ways you can invest. Um, I, what they call ICOs. Uh, there's another term for Let it. Let me just talk to you really quickly. What is an ICO? Oh, initial coin offering. Okay. That's the new projects. That's like a, it's like a startup for cryptocurrency. Okay. Okay. So that's almost like crowdfunding, something very similar. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like crowdfunding because people are trying to get, go, Sai speak. See, you act like you didn't know. All right. So um, it is like crowdfunding. So you can put a small investment and potentially, you know, make a, make a great deal of money on it. Um, so that's another way. That's a third way. But just being a fourth way is to open a channel, like I said, like mine. You get a YouTube channel. And once you have over a thousand subscribers and a certain number of views, then you can monetize what they call monetize your channel and you can start getting ad revenue from YouTube. You can also get like sponsorships. Um, I've had people contact me to, um, and they'll, you know, they'll pay me in cryptocurrency to talk about their particular project um, or at least share with my viewers about their particular project. So there's once you open a channel or you open some of these, like your podcast or something like that, it opens you up to other opportunities for, uh, making money online. May I, may I, mind if I share one more with your viewers? One more thing. No, we love to share. Go for it. Okay. Awesome. Um, I have a video and I'm going to do an updated one. Um, and it's called how to make $10 to $90 an hour online in your free time. Okay. So this, this particular one is dated. It's about a year old, but it talks about sites like Userlytics. U-S-E-R-L-Y-T-I-C-S, -E and I'm sure you can put that in your show notes, Userlytics. And what you do is, I'll just read their, their explanation. Would you enjoy being paid on a part-time basis to check out the usability of apps or a website as you test from your home on your own time whenever you're free? Now you can by participating in user testing and providing your feedback and suggestions. Your work will consist of completing a series of tasks and instructions while interacting with prototype or production websites or mobile apps 
or viewing video commercials or other digital user interfaces while you speak out loud, post your thoughts, emotions, criticisms, and suggestions, and answer questions. You'll be paid five, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, even up to ninety dollars while doing so. This is a real site. This is real money. This is something that your users can do right now. Sign up, and they can they rate these products. So you know, like we might wonder, well, why is this website designed this way, or if I were up to me, I wouldn't put the start button here. I wouldn't put the login button here. I would put it on the left side or I'd put it on the right side or in the middle. Well, that's these are the folks who do it. These are the folks who test that. And you can be a part of that. Okay. Um, another one is trymui.com. And there's a few of them. Um, there's one more. I'll wait for that to come up. Do you mind spelling the try me? Yeah, it's T R Y M Y U I. Not very, you know, intuitive, but it's a very similar one. You can be, you do tests, you test these different websites out, see if they're functional. And this one, you'll be paid ten dollars for each test. To each test you take, a typical test lasts approximately twenty minutes. Okay. Okay. So this is another way. So. At the end of the day, maybe you've made 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks just by doing these, becoming a tester for this. And a third one, and this is, this is the last one I give you. I don't want to overwhelm you. I don't want you to think I'm hogging up all your time here. No, um, <laughs> no. Appreciate you sharing your wealth of information with us. So don't even think that so way. Much. Thank you. So a third one, and I don't have the URL directly in front of me, but I want to okay. make sure you get it so you can add it to your show notes, is... Um, to do the closed captioning. All right, do really? closed captioning, absolutely, on videos. And because if you ever try to get it, like if you look at a YouTube mm -hmm. and you know, so maybe they're talking fast, so they have a particular accent that you can't quite follow and you can hit the closed caption. But some of them you have to pay for the closed caption. Right. Well, someone is, there's, there's another person on the other side that's actually creating the closed caption, okay? And that person is getting paid to do that. Okay. okay. Would have never thought that somebody gets paid for closed captioning. Okay. Right? Now something I'm going to tell you something. If you want to do something fun, okay, this is for you and your viewers. All right, something fun. Turn on the closed caption on your television. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I hate it. I hate to have it on because <laughs> I tend to read it instead of watching the actors and join the right. show. It's like I'm studying, so I'm reading it the whole time. Right, and I'm reading, and I look up and see what's going on. I go back to reading. Uh, it's <laughs> some people is perfect and they're good with it. For me, it's no good. But I'm gonna tell you what I found out from it. Again, this is just a little experiment. Turn it on, and then listen, and then you'll start to notice that the words don't exactly match what the actors say because someone listened to it and typed that up. It's not automatic. Someone listened to the, to the actors, typed it up, and that's what they came up with. So sometimes you'll hear, you'll see like maybe an actor a curse. You'll see them drop an F-bomb, and it might say fart right. in closed caption. Or it might say, you know, the words will be similar, but it's not the exact word. And especially if it's in a dialect or something like that, right. you know, an English dialect or a West Indian dialect, um, then it will it'll do something like that. It'll be different. I'm going to look into that. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> while we're talking, I'm going, to, I'm going to Google it for you. All right. Yes. I'm sorry. Did I, you, I know you had some questions. You mentioned before that you had some specific questions for me. Yeah, I don't I know. I did. So I kind of, I mean, you, you gave us such a great overview and, um, but plain day to day, I came to you so I got $10 and I want to buy Bitcoin. Is that feasible? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can pull Is up your cash app right now. Is it worth me saying I have $10 Mm -hmm. And I want to buy Bitcoin. Would you? Would I still feel like I'm contributing to something? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, ten dollars is ten dollars, but it's you know you have to you have to start somewhere. It's no different than if you said um, I have ten dollars invested in the stock market. Is it worth it? Absolutely, because at some point Amazon was ten dollars. At some point Yahoo was ten dollars. At some point um, uh, IBM, Apple. Um, what are, what are some of the products that you use, for example? Um, Victoria's Secret. Um, that's 
a great was that, product. Is it L Brands? Is it L Brands? It's that? L Brands. Um, you have L Cosmetic. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, I love food. No, um, we can do crafts. We could do things like that. So yeah. There you go. There you go. So. And I mentioned Ford earlier because Ford stock is down, but Ford is an interesting one because, and that's another place you can put your five dollars, your ten dollars, your twenty dollars, because uh, Ford is under five dollars a share right now, and Ford is also involved in the um, uh, the driverless cars, just like what uh, Tesla is doing. Tesla's not the only one. So Ford. Ford. Ford Motor Company stock is under five dollars a share. And they're also one of the ones that's involved with Ford, Volkswagen, um, I think Mercedes is, is one as well. But I know Ford stock in particular. And I'm not pumping it out. I mean, I own some, but it's not, I'm just sharing it just to share with your viewers. Well, thank you for sharing it. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's another tidbit, driverless cars. Um, now here's, here's a little tidbit for you. Um, if you take Uber, if you take Lyft, you can buy those shares right now. And of course, as you know, with the, uh, with the COVID-19 and, and all that's been happening around the world, the stock market took quite a hit. So a lot of those stocks went down. Um, the stock the overall market, the S&P 500 and, and the Dow have come back almost to previous levels, which is unbelievable. But in the meantime, this is a good time to invest in some of those other companies. Like I said, um, Hilton Hotels, uh, Las Vegas Sands, you know, people haven't been going to hotels, people haven't been flying. So United Airlines stock, I looked at it last night, United Airlines stock before COVID-19 was $90 a share. $90 a share, it's $20 a share now. So when, when again, will we have the opportunity to buy a $90 stock at $20 a share? Um, budget budget Rent-A-Car, Hilton, Hilton Hotels, um, like I said, Las Vegas Sands casinos, because people are terrified, you know, what are you doing in a casino? You're touching the machine, right? right? And as we know, you know, but people, and especially people um, in Macau and Asia, they wear gloves in casinos anyway, and they wear masks anyway. So for them, it's not going to be that unusual. So in that instance, that's probably what's going to happen. Casinos are going to reopen. They're not going to have the machines next to each other. And they're going to start making, taking people's money again, because it's, it's something that folks, you know, folks enjoy. People who go to casinos love it. And right. they, you know, they're not going to stay away. So those casino stocks that were previously 80, 100, $200 a share, they're down in the teens now, in the low 20s. And this is an opportunity to buy those. So back to your $10, is the $10 worth it? 100% absolutely in stocks, in cryptocurrencies, in Bitcoin, they would all be uh, potential for uh, getting an, a profit, getting a return. I just have one more question. Yes, absolutely. How, how can someone, where would they look to see what stocks are worth? Like say, okay, I am, I have $500 and I want to invest. How would someone mm -hmm. go about finding out where would be the best place to put their money? Their stock is down. They're a hot company. They may be in a slump right now, but you know they're going to mm -hmm. be down back up. How would we find out? Okay, like you said, Ford was like four dollars, five dollars. Right. How would we know that? Mm -hmm. Did you say you were from New York? You don't sound like it. You sound like you're from like the West Coast or something. But anyway, I just just a comment. You know, Sorry. it's so funny, Big Mo. I have gotten that a lot. Is that right? I You've got like a California vibe. And I nope. I am New York raised, um, Southern mother, West Indian father, but I am a New Yorker to my heart just so happened to go on to college in the South. So I don't know where the West Coast comes from. I have no I idea. It's, it's a vibe thing. So I'm not the first person to say it. No. No. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> You're so observant. Right. I, I digress. I digress. <laughs> so one of the places that you go is uh, finance.yahoo.com. So a lot of people go to yahoo.com for... Really? Yeah, but this is one I've been using for years and years, and um, I love it. It gives you charts. It gives you, you know, you can see what some of the lowest stocks are. Um, another one, now this, this is a sleeper one, and it's a little more advanced, but they have a lot of uh, charts, 
they have uh, podcasts, they have um, tutorials, they have videos and so forth. And that is Investor's Business Daily. So it's IBD. You can buy the newspaper, you can buy the physical paper, but you can go online and it's investors.com. Is that a paid membership or can I sign up for free? You can sign up for free to get the basics and you can read the articles, but it is a paid, it is a paid membership. You can either pay to have the paper delivered to you or you can have the digital, um, we can read the digital online. All right, and um, they always have some kind of special like two weeks free, or they just had a Mother's Day one, or it's like uh, $10 a month for two months, $20 for two months, something like that. And uh, normally it's, you know, it's a, it's a larger fee, but they have a lot of great information. So those would be two, two good sites for your, uh, for your, for your viewers, um, finance.yahoo.com and investors.com. Okay. And um, they have all kinds of seminars. I, I definitely uh, recommend investors.com because they have um, courses. I don't, again, I don't have any stake in this, but okay. they, have, uh, sure? they have courses. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it, right? They have uh, courses you can take. They have free, they have free podcasts. They have free um, uh, instructional videos, that kind of thing. How to invest, how to spot a stock, how to spot a good stock, how to, um, you know, how to know if the market is an uptrend. So it has a lot of that kind of good kind of stuff. You can actually you can even buy their courses on eBay. Yeah. I always like to ask my guests to give my viewers three to five life wisdom nuggets. Um, it could be about Bitcoins, but anything you are willing to impart that can bless someone's life beyond just Bitcoin, just make them an overall better person. If you don't mind sharing. Uh, no, not at all. Um, one is believe in yourself, take a chance. You know, um, I, uh, as I mentioned to you before, I'm just so impressed with um, how you make an illness, dealing with an illness seem like nothing. You know, I'm sure that you have your up days and your down days, but uh, as you and your viewers are dealing with these types of chronic illnesses, is, is that the right word? Did I say, yeah. is that the right word? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want to, you know, misspeak, but um, it's just courageous. You know, um, I think sometimes other folks like myself, we take certain things for granted, health related items. And I know it can, things can come out of nowhere. So, um, so the first thing I would say is have the courage to participate, have the courage to be engaged um, just because it's not something you're familiar with, just because it's not something you do day to day, take the time and read a little bit, set aside a little time to uh, learn about it. Um, so that would be my number. My number two thing is don't be scared to take on new skills, learn new skills. Um, according to this TEDx talk, it takes 20 hours. Actually, I have it up here. It's 20 hours to a new skill. All right, 20 hours. So you can learn Spanish. You can learn a ukulele. You can learn about Bitcoin. You can learn any basic new skill in 20 hours. You can go from knowing nothing to knowing something. You're not, you know, not an expert, but to have an understanding of it in 20 hours. So if in the course of the next 30 days, you could set aside one hour a day, you know, you miss a day here and there, and you could learn about Bitcoin, you could learn about whatever. Um, so that would be my second thing. My third nugget is no amount of money is too small to start investing in yourself, investing in the stock market, investing in cryptocurrency, investing in a new business, um, just start to set aside, fund aside. I understand about having limited resources. You know, we've all been there at some time or another, but put aside, um, set aside your financial freedom fund. If it's a dollar a day, whatever you have to do. Um, I've already shared several sites where you can, you can make $10, $20, $50, $100. Um, you can do Instacart. You know, that's another way that people that, that, that became very popular during this COVID-19. So if you have a car, you can go shopping for people who don't want to come outside and you can get paid for that resource plus tips. Right. And it's not the same as, you know, delivering a pizza and getting jacked or something like that. You know, you're actually interacting with someone. They paid for this order up front right. and you can, you can pay for this service. So um, my thing would be pay attention, look around, get involved. How's that? That's good stuff. Thank you so much. 
for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you for answering all the questions. I'm sure there's going to be many more to come um, because I think if nothing else, COVID-19 has shown us that we have to find creative ways to make sure that we're wealth building and, right. you know, thank God for people that have traditional nine to fives, but that's not enough in this day and age. Right. So um, someone with your wealth of information and wisdom is invaluable because now you're giving us a new way to think because who would have thought five years ago that we would be able to pay for anything with fiber money. Right. You know? So thank you for just being who you are. Um, it's been my pleasure speaking with you. Um, thank you for the tips, right? Especially about Ford. Um, and I too have looked into getting into stocks via my cash app because that's something that I use frequently. So it's very mm -hmm. easy and user friendly. And now because of you, I now know to look to see how much the share is worth Okay. So I can have an idea of how much to purchase and what I'm getting for my purchase. So just in the 30, 40 minutes, you have shown me something that I can take with me forever. And I hope my viewers feel the same way. Um, last thing, give yes. us your, how we can stay connected with you. I know you said in the beginning, or I, I did, but I would like for you, how can we stay connected with Big Mo? Yes, um, I'm Big Mo Crypto on YouTube. I have a channel. And I post videos about initially always about crypto, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, but now it's also about other ways to make money online. And, um, you know, so I have some videos, please, you know, please like some, please become a subscriber. And, uh, if you have any requests, please let them, let, you know, make a note on my, um, on my page or through uh, yourself, their size speaks. And, um, I will be glad to um, address it. If someone wants to know, you know, some of the things that we talked about if you you know maybe i can come back on your show absolutely um, you're always welcome and we can we can talk some more um or they can uh drop me a line on on, on my channel and i'll be glad to create a video about whatever the topic is thank right. you so much big mo thank you're you. phenomenal thank, thank you so you. much for being my guest this evening thank you to everybody for tuning in i hope you were blessed by this wonderful wealth of information and we'll do it again next week. I'm your girl, Side Speaks. Good night.